Tonight on Q2, cracking down on crime. Everybody's doing a crime of opportunity. They're just trying doors, going around town, checking doors. Billings police look to tackle the growing problem of stolen guns. Plus, closing time. Super unhappy with that decision, um, and I think it's going to have greater effects past just this next year. Billings school board members deliver a big blow to Washington Elementary School and a true rising star. Montana actress Lily Gladstone continues to make history in Hollywood, this time aiming for an Oscar. The MTN 10 o'clock news starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Well, good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. Billing City leaders have made it their 2024 mission to stomp out violent crime. Now, one of those goals is to bring down rising weapon thefts, which continue to plague police. Our Charlie Kleps has been digging into the numbers and even tagged along with a community service officer to see that problem firsthand. The numbers are pretty shocking. Nearly 200 weapons were stolen on the streets of Billings in 2023. And in most cases, all these thieves needed to do was open an unlocked car door. It seems to happen almost every day in Billings. This surveillance video posted to Facebook is from just this week. It shows strangers on Lori Welch's Lockwood doorstep in the middle of the night, seemingly trying to get into her home. On edge, definitely, yeah. If I didn't have this ring camera and I came to the door, it would have been a much different situation, I'm sure. Just a few months ago and not far down the road, it was a much different situation. Lockwood resident Brasser McCobb was shot several times when he tried to confront a group of teens trying to break into his vehicle. It's sad, and I just hope that a lot more people out there get preparing and getting cameras like this. McCobb's family tells us he's now paralyzed from the waist down and recovering in a Colorado hospital. And it's cases like these that keep community service officers like Amanda Newell busy. I would say last month and before, we were getting um, almost daily. Newell and other CSOs investigate reports of stolen weapons and sift through doorbell camera footage like this, showing suspects going car to car looking for unlocked doors. Everybody's doing a crime of opportunity. They're just trying doors, going around town, checking doors. If they can open the door and steal what you have inside, then that's what they're doing. Newell says stolen weapons calls reach scary levels toward the end of 2023. Take a look. In a year-long span from December 1st, 2022 to December 1st, 2023, Billings Police reported 690 cases of theft from vehicles. 177 of those cases involved stolen weapons. There was a couple times that I had many in a day. It's an issue Newell says could easily be avoided and why she's urging everyone to do what they can. We just try to tell people, make sure you're not leaving your weapons in your car, um, whether you lock it or not. Advice many, like Laura Lori Welch are taking to heart. Now I'm going to have my cameras on and doors locked and a lot more things tightened up. In Billings, Charlie Kleps for MTN News. Crime and what can be done to make the community safer is something on a lot of people's minds, no doubt. It was also the subject of a panel discussion tonight at the Billings Public Library. I was there for that. The first all-city task force safety meeting brought together people who serve on many of the neighborhood task forces throughout Billings. They heard from a pastor, a city councilwoman, a county commissioner, a member of the Crow Tribe, a retired DEA agent, and a probation officer. All of them gave their thoughts on the behaviors leading to crime and how people can begin to make a difference in changing them. All talked about the importance of getting involved. We've got to start talking to our kids. How many of y'all have actually sat down and said, Susie or Joe, what's, what's happening in your school? What kind of drugs are you hearing about? It's greater than just what can we do from a community standpoint, but what can we do perhaps from a, from a spiritual standpoint to help people? And, but have you ever sat down a native, talked to them? You would understand a lot about where they come from, who they are, what their struggles are. Ask yourself as you walk out tonight, how can I come alongside the most vulnerable children in the community? Because there is no more effective crime prevention strategy. Billings has nine neighborhood task forces spread throughout the city. You can find out more information about how to get involved on the City of Billings website. I've put a link to it in this story on KTVQ.com. Billings School Board trustees handed down a big vote last night, forcing Washington Elementary to close to make room for two of Superintendent Irwin Garcia's proposed charter schools. The parents are left with a lot of questions about what's next for their kids. Jackie Coffin has more on the debate. 
Washington Elementary School here is pretty much right in the center of Billings. It's off of 11th Street between Broadwater and Central. But despite its location, school district officials say the school's population is too small to keep it open and voted Monday to close the school. Six yeses, one no. The motion does pass. With a motion from the Billings School Board and a motion from the crowd. But I'd still like to say my piece. School board members voted six to one Monday night to close down Washington Elementary School. There's teachers crying and then you hear all these parents talking and this one's like, oh, we're going out of district. What are you doing? Oh, we're homeschooling. And it's just, I mean, that's all the conversations. In the audience and voicing her concerns is Danielle Paisley, whose child is a first grader at Washington. The numbers in the row tiled grade level counts do not make sense. Paisley, who is also a foster parent, is leading the charge to keep the school open, out loud and online, with a change.org petition. So we love Washington School. I've always had a great experience with them. But closing Washington School means Paisley's kids and more than 100 others will have to be dispersed to three other elementary schools, Broadwater, Newman, and Miles. You want to disperse them to these other schools that are nearing capacity anyway. Um, but a lot of these families came from those other schools because of the services offered at Washington. Payne Point Superintendent Erwin Garcia acknowledges, but he says the school district has bigger problems. Currently, the elementary district has a $3.5 million deficit. Uh, on top of that, we anticipate losing uh, all the COVID money that we had for the past three, four years. Garcia says Washington's low student population makes it more expensive to operate than other schools, and that closing it will save the district two and a half million dollars. But Paisley has worries beyond school budgets, worried also about overcrowding, a problem Garcia disputes. Actually, we will be within state numbers. Uh, there's no such thing as a kindergarten classroom with 30 or 40 kids. That doesn't happen in Billings. The timeline now is to close the elementary school and convert it to Washington Innovation Center after this school year. In Billings, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. <laughs> After that, another late night vote with the Billings School Board voting to keep a controversial book in high school libraries. The five to four decision to not ban the book Assassination Classroom came after hours of public comment. Many spoke out in favor of the book, despite being banned in Laurel for its depiction of gun violence toward teachers. Supporters argue the book contains several positive messages and argue banning it creates a slippery slope process began with a parent asking that book to be removed. Here's a look at where we are as far as snowfall for the mountains go. These percentages all represent the amount of snow in the mountains right now compared to what we'd see in a typical year based on the 30 year average. You can see it's less than half through the central portion of the state, not doing quite as poorly through northern Wyoming, but nowhere on the map are we seeing conditions where we're seeing an average amount of snow and that's starting to show up in the drought monitor. This is the drought monitor as of the first of the year. Now watch as we take it through the last several weeks, you can see see the area of drought continuing to expand around the Bozeman area and we have more dry areas into the eastern plains as well. Are we going to get any help from Mother Nature? This is the forecast outlook February, March and April leaning towards about average precipitation. Hopefully we can do a little better than that. And as far as temperatures go, we're still leaning towards a warmer than average late uh, winter and early spring. Forecast details coming up. Governor Greg Gianforte and 15 other governors are asking the Biden administration to put an end to the electric vehicle mandate, which calls for two out of every three vehicles to be battery electric by 2032. According to the governors, they are not opposed to EVs, but say the mandate is unrealistic and doesn't reflect what consumers want. They also noted the lack of infrastructure to support the mandate and issues with EV affordability. The nation's first Republican primary will go to former President Donald Trump. Trump is well on his way to a victory over former U.N. Ambassador and South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley. But despite the projected loss, Haley vows to stick it out. Skylar Henry has the latest tonight. CBS News projects former President Donald Trump has won the first in the nation primary in New Hampshire, following his 30-point victory in last week's Iowa caucuses. Well, I want to thank everybody. This is a fantastic state. This is a great, great state. You know, we won New Hampshire 
Three times now, three. Former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley is the only Republican still challenging Trump for the party's nomination. She worked to pull in independent and anti-Trump voters. With Donald Trump, you have one bout of chaos after another. This court case, that controversy, this tweet, that senior moment. You can't fix Joe Biden's chaos with Republican chaos. Haley's main super PAC expects she'll stay competitive through Super Tuesday in March when the greatest number of states hold their nominating contests. And things could change between now and then as Trump's legal cases play out. CBS News exit polling finds New Hampshire Republican primary voters divided on whether a Trump criminal conviction would make him fit for the presidency. Trump has too much baggage. He's got indictments on him. Who knows if he gets the, the primary and wins the primary, he may wind up in court in jail. Exit polling also finds an electorate unhappy about the economy and immigration. Look at the fentanyl coming in the country. Look at it's the crime in our country. We need to secure our country for our kids. The last four winners of the New Hampshire GOP primary have gone on to be the Republican presidential nominee. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Manchester, New Hampshire. After making history earlier this month for being the first Native American to win the Golden Globe for Best Actress in a Drama, Lily Gladstone has done it again, this time aiming for an Oscar. Gladstone, a member of the Blackfeet Nation, is now the first Native American woman to be nominated for Best Actress at the Academy Awards. Gladstone is a graduate of the University of Montana. She's receiving critical acclaim for her role in Martin Scorsese's film, Killers of the Flower Moon. The Academy Awards are scheduled for March 10th. Well, still ahead on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2, Code Red No More. Billing sounds the final alarm on its emergency alert system. And in sports, Class A action on the hardwood as the Rams battled the Lions. Highlights between Central and Lockwood on the way. And as we head to the break, we remember longtime CBS newsman Charles Osgood, who passed away today after a battle with dementia. Osgood anchored CBS Sunday morning for 22 years and hosted the Osgood file on the radio for four decades. Charles Osgood was 91 years old. The MTN 10 o'clock news continues right after this.